Look, if you are still having issues with populating a Google Meet link inside of your high level appointments, you need to stay until the end of this video. I'll show you how you can create a calendar that will automatically do that for you. So you don't have to go to Google anymore, generate a meeting link, and then go to high level and paste that link. You don't have to do that anymore. And I'll show you in this video. Editor, play the intro. So let's jump into this content. I'm already sharing my screen with you guys. The first thing that we will have to do is to create a calendar. So we're going to click on create calendar. We're going to select round robin. And why do we choose round robin? The round robin calendar will automatically get the availability of all your users as long as they have been added to the calendar, which means that if you have, let's say you have three employees, you have an employee that works from Monday to Tuesday, the other one that works on Wednesdays and the other one that works on Thursdays and Fridays. When you share this calendar with your contact, they will see every single day from Monday to Friday available. However, if they book on Monday, it's going to be with the user that was available on Monday. If they book on Wednesday, it's going to be with the user that was available on Wednesday. And if it was on Thursday or Friday, it's going to be with the user that was available on Thursday or Friday. So with that in mind, you need to create this calendar. And that's why we use round robin because it automatically gets that person who is available for that time. And we're going to see more settings here. So the first thing is the name of the calendar. Then you're going to select the team members. Then you're going to type in a unique name for this widget. So I'm going to put calendar round robin dentist. Then you're going to choose the duration of the meeting and the availability. You're going to choose this based on what makes sense for your business. So I'm going to click on confirm. Now the calendar has been created. And then if you click on the calendar, we can see other settings. So when you click on it, you can see the logo. You can set up an image that's going to show up on this calendar. You can select a name, a description. The other thing you can do is you can add this calendar to a group. For example, you could have several service calendars and you can create a group that will have all the service calendars. So you can have like Google ads consulting, Facebook ads consulting, automation consulting. And then when you share the group link, people will see, oh, I have the option to book a Facebook ads consulting, a Google ads consulting, an automation consulting, and you can select different users to be available for each one of those calendars. That's another idea out there for you to use better the calendars from high level. Then there's the meeting invite title. This is the name of the meeting. Okay. In this case here, we are using the contacts full name. You can add the contacts company here, the contacts phone number, email, whatever makes sense for you. And we have the appointment distribution. In this case, there's only one user in this calendar. So it wouldn't make any sense either one of these options. But if you have two users, for example, you can use the optimize for availability, leaving one with higher priority and the other one with lower priority, which means that the one with higher priority will get more leads than the one with lower priority. And you can also do equal distribution. That means that if you get 10 leads, five will be assigned to each one. Besides that, you can select the color. Then we have the availability. This is important for you to select what times your calendar will be available for people to book. And then we have these other settings. They are important. The meeting interval. This is how the meetings are going to show up in your calendar. If you do 15 minutes, that means that people will see 8, 8.15, 8.30, 8.45, 9, 9.15. If you do 30 minutes, 8, 8, 30, 9, 9, 30, 10, 10, 30. The meeting duration, you're going to specify whatever makes sense for you. Then there's the minimum scheduling notice. And if you put 24 hours here, that means that the person who is booking, trying to book an appointment, they won't see the August 13th. Today's August 12th, so they won't see August 13th. You can also put eight hours here, which means that if your available time is within like business like normal business hours, that's also going to be taken into consideration. The other thing that you have the date range, this is how much time ahead in the future are you allowing people to book? So if you put 60 days, people can book an appointment within two months ahead. The maximum bookings per day, this is how many bookings you will allow on the same day. The maximum bookings per slot, this is how many appointments you, you can handle on the same slot. If you put two, that means if someone books a meeting with you at 8 a.m., another person can book that same time, but the third person wouldn't see it. And the pre-buffer time is how much time you need to prepare for a meeting. So that's going to be taken before the meeting. And the post-buffer time is how much time you need to recover from that meeting. As an example, if you put both five minutes and you and someone books an appointment with you at 8 30 that means that the appointment at 8 a.m will be unavailable because it needs the five minutes before that meeting for you to prepare and also the the appointment from 9 a.m will be 
locked because the system knows that you need five minutes after the meeting to get ready. So those appointments will be affected based on post buffer time and pre buffer time. So keep that in mind when you select these options. Then you have the form that can be selected when people book an appointment. You have the option to accept payments. Uh, you need to keep in mind that you need to have your system set up with the payment integration before, either Stripe, PayPal, Square, whatever you use. Then we have the notifications. Most people will use automations for notifications, but you can still let Google send notifications if you want to. But the important setting is this one right here, which is assign contacts to their respective calendar team members each time an appointment is booked. This means that whenever that contact set up a meeting, they will be automatically assigned to that specific user. And if you don't want that to happen, if the contact already has an associated user, you just leave this option marked and then that won't happen. If a contact is already associated with the user, they won't be reassigned even if they book an appointment. And the last thing is customizations. Here you can personalize the CTA, the call to action, the color on the calendar, and you can even add a CSS uh, custom code here in order to make your calendar more visually appealing. And now I'm going to show you what you have to do on the user side of things to have this implemented. There is one thing we forgot. So before we move on to the user settings, make sure you click on the calendar, you add it, and then you select Google Meet for each one of the users that you would like to be available for this calendar. If you don't select Google Meet, this whole setup will not work. So select Google Meet, and then we can jump into the user settings. So what we have to do here now is we need to log in as the user that you will do the settings for. And to do that, you can click login as, and then you can select that user, and then you'll be able to act in the platform like it was that user. Then you're going to select my profile because it's here is where you're going to make all the settings. First of all, you need to connect your email here. So you're going to select Google and then go through the wizard where you select the Google account and then it's connected. Then you're going to add a calendar. You're going to see an option right here, add calendar. If you haven't integrated your Google account with high level yet, you're going to be directed to this page. You're going to select the Google account and then you're going to be prompt for Google Business Profile, Google Analytics, Google Ads, just like we're doing here. But all you need to have is your Google account connected with high level. After that, you're going to go back to my profile. You will select the linked calendar, the conflict calendar. Make sure they both are selected here. And in the meeting location, you're going to choose Google Meet and then you're going to click on update availability. That's all the settings that you need in order to make this work. Let's recap here. The email to sync needs to be active. The calendar needs to be active as well. You need to select the right calendar and connect them. Then you need to select Google Meet as the meeting location under the user availability section. And the last thing which I have explained is go to your calendar, check on the users and see if Google Meet has been selected here. After all these settings have been checked and done, you are good to go. And let's see how that works now. So now we're going to click on the calendar. I'm going to copy the meeting link. I'm going to click. I'm going to open it here. I'm going to select 9 a.m. I'm going to select here. I'm going to put my data and then I'm going to click on schedule meeting. And when I do that, you see, I have the meeting link automatically created. Guys, that's it. It's easy. You don't have to go through all these hiccups with Google Meet links. It's easy like that. And now you can do yourself following this video. If you need help with your Go High Level project, you can reach out to me. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video so we can talk, we analyze what you have going on, what are your objectives, and maybe we can partner together in one of your projects. And other than that, make sure that if you like this video, you leave a like. If you're not a subscriber of this channel yet, please subscribe. And guys, see you on the next one.